evening, ladies and gentle jukes. Welcome to the third edition of our Buncast, in which we will discuss baked goods and their particulars. No, we won't. Instead, we'll talk about films. Does that work for me? Uh, I want a waffle. No, you've mentioned that. Oh, that was the cunning plan, because I've been waffling all this time. Hey! Yeah. Hey! You should have your own yeah. chat, ah. <laughs> Tonight with me, I have Michael. Hello. And Craig. How are you? Yes. And gentlemen, I would put it to you that the action movie is dead. It's an inherently 80s concept and can no longer be made by Hollywood after the breakup of the USSR. Discuss. I agree entirely. Excellent. End show. Play jingle. <laughs> Curtains. You wouldn't have Red Heat with Arnold Schwarzenegger and James Belushi. Well, what, 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 that, is, what is action? What are we talking about here? Well, th- this is something that I thought we'd get on to pretty quick. Because you, you know, I think we can all agree that there is action. You know, action movies do constitute a genre, even if it's unclear exactly how. And also, was Red Heat not made in like eighty six or eighty seven? Yeah, it was. Hmm. Too sure. I think that um, if you're talking about like uh, action movies, as we were saying this earlier on, it does feel as if the action movie, the way we know it anyway, is sort of defined by the 80s you know and then sort of pushing into the early 90s but then after that it, the action movie was really sincere then and now you well that, get... that's my point exactly you know nowadays you know you can never have just an action movie it always has to be an action movie with an angle you know if you, yeah. ha- if you have an action movie at all you know really nowadays i think we tend more towards uh, a thriller you know with uh, with you know quite often a lot of action in it but it's not what i would call an action movie well, would it, would it be in that instance taking action movies as a genre as interchangeable with the, the action stars of the time as being sort of like archetypes? Like Arnie was an archetype, uh, Stallone archetype for the, the the vehicles in particular. Is that what well, we're seeing here? I mean, it's a it's a fair point. I mean, I, I would you could almost kind of link it to a certain idea of even maybe male masculinity. You know, kind of what a uh, a man was supposed to be at that point in the 80s. You know, there is something quite individualistic about the the 80s action hero. You know, there's something quite, uh, you know, you you must be your own man. You must go out and conquer. That's not something you get in the 90s. In the 90s, it was all about you know caring and sharing. But it, I, I think it is a stylistic thing as well, though, because I mean, you go to like uh, the Man with No Name films and things like that. You know, in the 60s. Um, you still have well, a, you still have that sort of action movie feel in a way to it, but you, you wouldn't just describe that as an action movie. You know, well, so. that, that's that's an interesting point because I mean I think that in many ways the action film as we would consider it now is something that's come out of the western. I mean, you know, you look at a lot of the earlier westerns; it is pretty clearly defined. You know, you have clearly defined bad guys. I mean, you know, nowadays, you know, we would really question that because a lot of times bad guys were the Indians. Uh, but it was the Americans, (laughs) Native Americans. Yeah, the Native American, yeah, the Native Americans, American Indians. At the time, they would. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Let's not get bogged down with semantics here. Yeah. Uh, Well. I think, well, the, the, the films I, I grew up with and, and loved from the offset, I mean, some of them are horrifically skewed in terms of the moral compass. There's always that vein of revenge that seems to, to, mm, to, to be a part of them. You don't get that just now. There's, there's, there's too much. Nothing's black and white now. Well, that, that's it, exactly. That's why it was kind of more uh, before the collapse of the Soviet Union, because it was very much, you know, they knew, or at least, you know, people thought they knew who the bad guys were at that point. But I think it's, like, as well, though, it's, it's the fact that, especially since, like, The Matrix, you know, action movies, they've lost their charm, you know, they're, they're, mm. they're too well-polished, you know, um, they're too... They're too clean cut, you know, they, they, and and it's it's not sort of spontaneous. And you know, you look at something like Die Hard, you know, and it's just amazing. There's nothing like. Well, that, that's right? it. I mean, I, I would even put it to you, you know, since uh, you know, 
really I, 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 there's there must be some point in the 90s it's like a cut off the a feel should be that i don't know maybe you can eraser. Consider... eraser that's that might be that might be worth a go when, when did that come out that was like 93 94 94? Oh, I, was, I think that eraser was maybe about 96 or something like that it probably happened before that but my point there would be like when arnie stopped making action movies that were mm. good for me well i mean maybe died. I would consider that maybe Arnie's last real great was probably True Lies. I would, so, I would say True Lies, yeah. Yeah, yeah when was to me that was like was that? action utopia. Um, but yeah, no, it's, uh, I mean, if you if you were to consider that the cut off, I mean, I would say that everything after that has been, in many ways, just sort of imitation of what's come before. I mean, a lot of the ones in the '90s, you know, you, in the '90s, it was all sequels. You know, you were you were really only getting stuff that would be starring established action stars from the 1980s you know really it's just the same guys that have carried on when you look at well, i think it's interesting maybe I, mean, I, I refuse to to recognize die hard 4 as a die hard film mm. it's to me that the john mcclain in that film has nothing to do with the john mcclain that that i grew yeah. up with i mean and, and i've had people justify it by saying oh well characters develop john mcclain was always best as a sort of fisher of water yeah, I think that's... didn't have a clue what was going on type. And I think what happened is you had a period where he developed sort of this acting edge about him with uh, the sixth sense and he started to get this sort of sensibility that, you know, he, he was he was more of an actor. And I think he tried to sort of tack that on to the Die Hard mm. uh, franchise and it didn't work. So what it means whether these things are a product of the time, I don't know. Because I remember they were trying to get the rock, weren't they? And they did the whole yeah. sort of passing the torch thing to the rock, and whatever happened to the rock, I don't know. I don't. Statham as well. Don't make movies. <laughs> they tried to do with Statham, just Statham. That's that's a fair point. Because I mean, really, they're the only two kind of people that are really recognisable who've come into it within you know the last 10, 15 years or so. I think it parallels just as I keep saying, it's it's just the way. Yeah, it's it's happening in uh, in uh, the film industry and it's also happening in the music industry. You know that really, although they've they've always been about making money, studios always had people there that still wanted to balance that out and make good films. And now mm-hmm. it's just really they don't care at all <laughs> about what they're putting out. And you only need to look at like the Alien versus Predator films and stuff like that to to realise that. Well, I mean, uh, Alien vs. Predator being little more than a cash grab, you know, I wouldn't want to get too hung up on that. But, I mean, I think these days the only example of something I could look at and say, yeah, that's probably going to be an action film would be The Expendables. But I think that's an interesting one because that is literally just bringing back all the old guys. You know, there's, I mean, unless you count Statham and I think Jet Li, I believe, is in yeah. it as well. Really, yeah, other than that, Jet Li was it is just the old thing. guard. Yeah. Sorry, what were you going to say? No, just you know, like Jet Li, I think you can class him as, what was it, the, the tail end of that era? Yeah. Um, I think, you know... Uh, I, th- I would, yeah, yeah, I would struggle to call him an action star in the se- usual sense, though, because, I mean, I think he really kind of came up through martial arts films initially. Yeah, yeah, he did. But I don't know. I just I just think that uh, it's the same with any genre, really. It's just that there aren't... There are great filmmakers out there, but they're just not getting the chance. When they do get a mm. chance, uh, they're being told what to do by producers, really. I think that's the problem. So we're saying that this, this was the muscle-bound action hero. Was, was It was a phenomenon that lasted approximately seven years or so and was total flash in the pan and we might never see it again. Could we never see a, a resurrection of that type of filmmaking again? I don't know. Well, you think about like Assault on Precinct 13. I mean, that was in the 70s. And you, you get a lot of exploitation films, I think, that sort of hemorrhaged out into the action genre mm-hmm. in the 80s. And I think yes. um, going back to that sort of filmmaking would be fantastic. But like I say, there's just too much money involved now. I do I do agree to a certain extent that um, action has it's now been over choreographed to death. Uh, I do harken back, you know, to remember when I, somebody used to throw a punch and it used to sound like them hitting a sandbag. Yeah, 
you know what I mean? Which is, of course, it's ludicrous, but it was the satisfying crunch. Mm-hmm. You know, everything's so slick now. And Well, I think, you know, a lot of that we can probably blame squarely on the Matrix. But I think we're heading pretty close to the 10 minutes now, so we, I fear we may have to wrap this up. But, uh... God, that was quick. That I know. Was quick. I know. That was quick. Well, I just like to say bullet time <laughs> that's what I would like yeah, to say yeah I right. think that's quite a good way of ending actually yeah do we agree I agree I agree oh, then. screw you the Wachowski brothers <laughs> screw you and your millions of dollars I know they, they should give us their money yeah um, I should probably I do like the Matrix All right. only the first one um I'm 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 going now uh so see you later <laughs> bye <laughs> bye <laughs>